Hello and welcome to another edition of the Moving Iron Podcast. This podcast is proudly provided by Axon, helping dealers move more iron for almost 100 years. Find out more at axontire.com. Axon was started almost 100 years ago out of a passion for keeping agriculture moving. It's that same passion that drives them today. With a vision for a better experience for both farmer and dealer, they set out to create a better way to move more iron. When you partner with Axon, you get immediate access to a full range of products and solutions designed to meet the complex needs of today's grower. Axon carries all major brands and sizes of tires, wheels, and tracks. From custom colors and sizes to fully customized wheels, you can have the solution for virtually any problem today's farmer is trying to solve. To find more or become an Axon dealer, please visit axontire.com. Moving iron in the 21st century. Hardworking people working hard for you and me. Time and time again Through the years you'll find us here Moving Iron Hey everyone, it's Jacqueline Kramowski with the Herdbook Ag Media giving you your Moving Iron Ag News update here for this first week in June 2021. So I'd be remiss if I did not start today's segment with the breaking headline of not only agricultural news, but also news around the world. As by now, chances are you've heard about the major cybersecurity attack on JBS servers that support both North American and Australian IT systems. This caused several company delays and disruptions, uh, especially here in the U.S. in the state of Iowa. According to JBS in Brazil, they were informed by JBS USA and Pilgrim's Pride because both companies um, were impacted by the cyber attack. And operations in Mexico and the United Kingdom had not been impacted. However, this caused a major issue for the plants in Iowa. As a result, uh, one report from Bloomberg said that during the issue, beef processing facilities were closed or had shifts canceled in the states of Utah, Texas, and Nebraska, and Iowa while the issue was resolved. Later that day, June 1st, the Biden administration was made aware of the issue that had happened with the White House Principal Deputy Press Secretary, Karen Jean-Pierre, who offered JBS any assistance. And during a press debriefing later on, it was said that the ransomware came from a criminal organization likely based in Russia. In addition to the White House's involvement, the U.S. Federal Bureau of Investigation, U.S. Department of Agriculture, along with the Australian and Canadian governments, all offered their assistance in getting the issue sorted out. As you can probably imagine, agriculturalists and agribusinesses across the state of Iowa and across the nation for that matter, have been on especially high alert for ransomware and malware attacks in light of this. But of course, we cannot note that this has put some additional strains on a political and global level as well with relations between the U.S. and Russia. Recently, the White House has said that all their options for action against this criminality would be on the table and that President Biden himself would raise the issue directly with Putin and other leaders uh, later in Geneva as they meet. And that'll be later on this month, I should mention. According to the White House press secretary, President Biden certainly thinks that President Putin and the Russian government have a role to play in stopping and preventing these attacks. Hence, it will be a topic of discussion when they meet in two weeks. We're not taking options off the table in terms of how we respond. And while we are still talking about Washington, recently Agriculture Secretary Vilzik had said that the proposal calls for $700 million have been requested for the ReConnect program to provide access for greater quality broadband for rural residents. And uh, the proposal here would invest in critical research and development, especially for farmers living in areas with very poor broadband connectivity. The same budget proposal would also provide $4 billion for the Department of Agriculture's research, outreach program, education, etc., Uh, all geared towards making investments in agriculture research and science and data-driven tools specifically to help farmers and ranchers. And, of course, I should mention the budget also is leaving room for an increase in quote-unquote climate-smart agriculture 
climate resilience, and ag clean energy in the ag sector by another $1.5 billion. In addition to Vilzik's support, the House Ag Committee chair has also said that he applauds these efforts specifically in terms of investment for rural Americans and food systems, uh, especially where broadband is concerned. Those interested in purchasing agricultural land have grown significantly since the pandemic, uh, with land prices being greatly marked up, especially when you compare them to last spring. This, of course, is kind of a positive when you consider this is also due to farmers feeling significantly more financially secure. However, it also means that farmland sale prices are up for anyone looking to invest in more land this year. According to the Senior Vice President of Real Estate Operations at the Farmers National Company, Farmland prices are 5 to 15% in the past six months, with most of the increase coming since the first of the year. Competitive bidding among interesting buyers is really pushing land prices right now. And I should mention, too, that this isn't necessarily just farmers. There's also a rise in individual investors, first-time and experienced land buyers who are now coming into the rural land market, um, specifically as they look for types of real estate investments. The majority of these ag land price increases are happening in the Green Belt. All right, and that here should catch you up to date for this week. This ag news update is brought to you by the Herdbook Ag Media, serving all your agribusiness writing, communication, and media needs. Find us on Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, or our company website, the-herdbook.com. Let me know you found about us here on Moving Iron and get 20% off your first invoice. You want to have a meaningful, competitive advantage to help sell more equipment. Whether you represent the sales, parts, or management department of an implement dealership, there's a surprising amount of complexity when it comes to tire, wheel, and track technology. Let Axon worry about that so you can get back to supporting your customers. Axon has leveraged years of experience to create a streamlined process that gives you a proven path to help today's grower and sell more equipment. The roots of their organization go back almost 100 years to the invention of the rubber tractor tire. Supporting agriculture is the number one driver of Axon from product development through sales and service. To find more or become an Axon dealer, head over to axontire.com. Moving iron in the 21st century. Hard-working people working hard for you and me. Moving higher, time and time again. Through the years, you'll find us here.